Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to draw this pattern, which is from a mosque in Iznik called the Green Mosque or the Green Masjid. And we're going to construct this um, quarter, this square, and then this tile will repeat four times or as many times as you wish to create the larger pattern. Okay, one thing to note is can you see this octagon? It's repeated in the corner so if we travel our eye in a diagonal sense we can see it along the diagonals um, but when we try to do that horizontally and vertically there's this square motif that comes in so when you construct this just think that whatever's going on at the center is repeated in the corners but in the middles of the sides there's something slightly different going on so that might help with your construction when we do certain things in certain places Uh, disguise my mistakes with a thick pen. Um, I'm predicting already there'll be three mistakes. It's my usual amount. Um, all right, so we're going to draw our horizontal and we're going to mark its center and we're going to open up our compass. I'm recommending a radius of seven centimeters and that will allow me to do the uh, size that I just showed you on A3 paper so that you'll get a repeat of four and you can trim it down to a nice square size and frame it and give it to uh, your nearest and dearest. Okay, so um, you've drawn your circle using the same radius. You're going to draw arcs that are going to begin just inside the circle and go off towards the side. As long as they're wider than the circle, you're fine. And if you're not sure, just let them kind of go off the page. There's no harm in that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to construct our vertical. So these two intersections I'm going to use. If for any reason you draw it on paper where this pair of intersections don't uh, land on the page and you need to reduce your compass, you can do so. All that will happen is that cross will be closer to the circle. So as long as this distance here, you don't reduce the compass to less than half, keep it more than half, it will just draw what you need to. Now, in all of this chit chat, my compass radius has moved. Why would it do that? Okay, let's uh, do the same at the top. So those two intersections, use them to create another intersection vertically in line with the center. And let's check. I feel my bottom one has moved. So I'm gonna redraw this because for some reason, it's not lining up and I did feel it, it move. So who knows what shenanigans have been going on. Yes, I was right. You got to um, sometimes just be really n noticing all the things, the tiny little changes that your pesky little compass does. It's an inanimate object. So it's amazing how it loves to just shimmy around, especially these ones with plastic parts and so on. Okay. I'm going to check again the compass for the umpteenth time. And now I'm going to divide, so I've divided the circle into four already, but I'm going to create the corners of my square. So using on the circle, the south intersection, the north intersection, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, whatever you prefer, we're going to complete the corners. So we can do the bottom two at the same time, and we can do the top two at the same time. Okay, for now our compass work is done and we have found enough information to draw the square that will be that tile for this pattern. Just have a look that I'm always putting the ruler underneath the drawing, underneath the situation so that I can see it will hit the uh, intersections it needs to and if it's easy for you to turn your page definitely do just makes it a little bit easier so this line should just skim the side of the circle just touch it if there's an overlap or a gap you can try and minimize it by um, kind of being aware of it in advance by positioning your ruler just underneath but don't worry too much if it really bothers you then just start again Ooh. 
Also now I'm adding the diagonals and I'm looking at the center to make sure that it goes corner to center to corner. Okay, next we're going to draw a dynamic square inside our circle. Okay, so the north point to east to south to west. Next thing I'm going to do is another square with its corners on the circle where the diagonal hits them. Be careful of these um, curves and also extend the lines. Don't stop at those intersections. They're just there for you to put your ruler in position and then draw a line through the whole square. Okay, think of this square as your area of action or your play, however you wish to describe it. And then you can make sure that your lines do the jobs in the places they need to. So I'm forever drawing lines that are too long. Okay. This gives us enough information to divide our square or circle into sixteenths. I'm going to pick out the points we're going to use because these are going to get a lot of use, these eight points. And be careful of ignoring the other intersections around. So it's like the base of a triangle. Okay, and if you take any one of those points and line it up with, I'm going to go back to pink, because pink is present. <laughs> um, if you go back to this, take any one of those points, line it up with the centre, and you'll find its partner on the other side, and then you can just get the best possible fit for that line. And being really conscious of it going through the centre is very useful. So like I said, we're going to use these eight points repeatedly. Um, we're going to do some lines. Let's change the colour to blue. Um, just to do a horizontal and vertical pair. We don't need to do the diagonals for this particular drawing. Other times you do. Okay, and what you should find is they cross the diagonal in one singular point. Now that happens for two of mine, but for the top line, I can see, yeah, there's tiny little triangles, like a little island of crossing. Not that it sounds as cute and nice as it should be, it's not wanted, <laughs> but um, I can see my line's a little bit lower than it ought to be. So standing over my ruler would have helped me position that better. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a series of squares inside this octagon, but we're going to extend the lines beyond that. And what you're going to be doing is um, joining up one of these points to the one that's one away. And when you do that, let me stand for this, um, you'll see that it lines up with the corner. So you've got three points you can line up. So that's the first one. And then if I do it this way, can you see it's lining up with the corner and these two? So it helps verify a point a little bit better. And when you have three points rather than just two, it's just so much more useful. So sometimes I'll deliberately add in extra information just to minimize my inaccuracy and try and get as accurate as possible. So that's 
one set and you can see the one square at a nice jaunty angle I'm going to draw the other one Okay, so therefore you have the outcome we needed, which was the two overlapping squares and these two lines in the corners we will need later as well. Um, I just spotted something. This probably should go a little bit further. I didn't need to, but it's looking unbalanced. Did it need to? Oh, we will discover. It's definitely needed in the corners, but whether it's needed in that rectangle, I doubt it. In that rectangle... Uh, the one that's at the top at the bottom and on the sides we need to draw in its diagonals this will help us draw the motif that's in those rectangles so remember we've got this um, idea that what we're doing at the center is repeated in the corners and what we're doing in the middles of the sides are repeated just in the middles of the sides so this is just in preparation for those Okay. The next thing we're going to do are draw three circles um, at the center and then repeated in the corners or from the corners um, so that we have quarter circles in the corners um, let me just show you the first and let's get what color shall I use I feel like orange is the future that used to be a phrase didn't it oh it was an ad campaign okay all right so the first quarter circles and it's only at the corners or in the corners, not in the center for this one. The other two will be in all five places. Okay, five. Did you see that? Okay. Um, in the corners, I want you to place your compass in the corner and open up your compass so that it just hits the diagonal lines. Now, I'm kind of doing a little recce and checking that they're going to do a certain thing because I have got some dodginess in my drawing oh yes this is terrible I know I said oh yes this is terrible so I want to minimize it I know it's there I've seen it it's crept in so I think I might just reduce my compass a little just a tiny touch and then that should be able to get the best fit in all of them and even then just before drawing I'm going to check them in each corner okay so that's what I'm after and again I've got the kind of agreed or size I want but then can you see in each corner there's potentially a little bit of a, a sprawling point so you can perhaps just reposition it tiny tiny amount and get the best fit. It's marginal the amount of um, adjustment I'm making because there's too many lines on top of the intersection for me to see exactly where it is. And I have a feeling, oh, this one's extra dodgy. It kind of sinks into the hole I've made. Let's see, I think I can minimize this a little bit. No, I can't. So there's a tiny little gap there. When I say tiny, it's huge. And there's an overlap there. So I can see this in areas of my drawing where maybe the radial line's gone a little bit dodgy or the corner's gone a bit dodgy. I'm just aware of it now. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna pick out the points we need for our next circle. I'm gonna draw a proportioning line actually first. And what I want you to find is if you imagine this inner octagon, well, you'd have to imagine, you can see it. There's the 12 o'clock point there. If you go along to the next... Hmm. 
no sorry I'm back so if you um notice that and then just go to the one to its right kind of in the one o'clock position and then come to the center and then come out and go towards nine o'clock so those two points we're going to join with a dotted line lining them up carefully but the dotted line you need to make sure it hits the points oh hello i moved it oh it hits the points um that are crossing lines okay now we need a few of these yes okay lots of thinking to myself there the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this point and is the same as these eight so the proportion circle has a multi-purpose and ignore that one apologies okay so we're going to open up our compass so that it hits all of those eight points now i did this a minute ago so just so that you know this is take two um, when I did it a minute ago, I committed to a line that was so wrong and I couldn't bear to live with it ending up on the interwebs permanently. Imagine I was going to get traumatised. Um, so I'm just going to check it carefully now. And it's doing the same thing that it's not touching all of them. And so I'm going to just try and get the best fit I can. Oh, let's see. And sometimes it's the minor, minor adjustments that you do and take care over that will kind of make you more satisfied with your drawing and just enable you to see a little bit better. I think. Ooh. It's kind of annoying that it doesn't fit all eight of them. This is, uh, I guess, the problem with drawing on a small scale. So I've committed to it and I know it's got flaws, but the flaws aren't as mega as they are on the other one. When you look in the corner, it should not hit the straight lines that are very close to it. So don't force that to happen um, because there's supposed to be a gap there. So we've got two of the circles we're after. Then we after, we're after one more. And this one comes from, let's pick it out, only, I guess it's two points, so this point and this point, let me just double check that for you. I am correct. It should be the same, but it's not looking the same on mine. Let's see what our compass tells us. And we're going to open up our compass so it touches the center and just hits those two points. Um, now, when I've done this in a class and people are trying to look for these points and it's not quite happening, as it's the case of mine, um, you know, you can obviously draw it again and try and get your accuracy a little bit better. I think it's not happening there. I'm going to double check. It should do technically be the same. I think when I had my ruler move, this one became closer. So I'm going to go with this one. And I'm not going to draw a third one. Life's too short. <laughs> and then repeat in the corners. So just be aware of where these um, inaccuracies can creep in. And the next time that you draw it, the version two, the version three, the version four, hopefully you can master them and minimize them and eliminate them. I often find, you know, we draw these patterns repeatedly. So just to show you what we're looking at, it's this eight pointed star, it's slightly got an inflated look about it. So the difference between those two inner and outer circles gives you this shape so as long as you've got that in and outer you can draw from it if the next time you do it you can just home in the detail a little bit better okay so our multicolored rainbow underlying grid is complete i'm going to transfer this to tracing paper um next now Okay, so this is the part where I'm going to attach the tracing paper. I'm going to trim it down slightly. I love, I mean, it's not even necessary, but I love doing that. It's so joyful. And as long as you're covering the square, you are fine. Okay, and that's good. And then with the masking tape, 
if you've got super duper amazing masking tape you might not have to do this but if you've got something from a shop called Wilco which is just a regular little shop it used to be I guess um, Woolworths and I think that's a bit more widely known in the world and just attach it either side and that's enough for you to uh, draw your lines okay I've got my 2B pencils sharpened and little because I never get rid of pencils for some reason and we're going to start by outlining the square of the pattern is actually part of the design which is really good so because sometimes you have to kind of not include the tile of the square but for this one if I just show you you can see the square is part of the pattern the diagonals are part of the pattern even that dynamic square so I'll pick that all out now okay okay I don't like that okay and I'm gonna press really firmly okay and I want the blackness to come through I want the lead to be a strong mark but if my pencil gets too blunt then I'm gonna sharpen it or switch it to the backup pencil okay so that's the square and let's put in the diagonals. These are the easy parts. And then put in the horizontal and the vertical. And then also these diagonals. okay all right i said they're okay again all right and the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to separate the octagons that are making their chain diagonally from the squares so um we're going to put in the sides of the squares so they look like rectangles here because there's only half of them but when they um join to one another one tile to the next that's how you'll complete the square so I've done this side, and then I'm going to do the inner side, so that's the complete length or side length of the square, as opposed to half. Okay, the other thing is, in the square we've got these little stars, I'm just going to show you how we're going to pick them out. So we're going to draw on top of the line, but then the other line isn't on the underlying grid, it's kind of something we're going to add in ourselves, and I'll repeat it here. So draw on top of the line and then put in that bit and let me repeat this because it's a, a line that's not in the drawing so put in that part and that part that are on the underlying grid but the vertically vertically tip or the one pointing upwards you draw in by just joining the points I think in one of my other videos I had to do a count of obviously or something, I can't remember. I feel like this video I'm going to do a count on them, okay? In a kind of cutesy voice. <gasps> okay, oh gosh I said it again. Uh, the next thing we're going to do um, is draw in the octagon. So the octagon at the centre, you can see it's uh, sides and I'm changing pencil, I'm not happy with that anymore. Um, yeah, you can see it was getting a bit thick. So, this octagon is present and correct, and it's visible. But in the corners, let's just lift it up a little bit, okay? We're just drawing on top of the octagon, that's it. In the corners, it's not there. So that's why we're gonna use the largest of the circles to draw the quarter of the octagon by just joining the circle meeting the horizontal to the diagonal to the vertical, okay? So it's joining intersections that are on the underlying grid below, but the lines aren't there. It was just a little shortcut, to, you know, 
save ourselves what three seconds three seconds in each corner 12 seconds that's not bad <laughs> okay so that's that bit done and then we are going to draw the actual inflated eight pointed stars i'm just going to show you once more so we've done the octagon and we're going to draw the in out of the inner eight pointed star and then final move is to just do the lines that are kind of the spokes leaving it okay so one thing to note is you always start if you think about the 12 o'clock position it's always in out in out in out so once you have that in your mind you're just going to bounce between the two circles and this line you have to do them all individually because it's not like this point here will make up something useful on the other side so just be aware that there isn't really a shortcut in this and as long as you get your in and out correctly positioned you don't sort of somehow accidentally rotate it you shall be fine i think it's useful to know to look for the kite shapes and if you get the full kite shape without kind of the line in the middle then you're okay it's the subtlest of bends that i want to say okay so that's what we've produced at the center and we're going to do the same at the edge and this time just make sure you always start on the horizontal or vertical on the inner circle and then go out and the thing you're producing in this tile are two kites um so this is the first kite and then this is the second kite so there's no lines through them yet or anything like that so just have that in mind that you're going to go in to out and you're looking for two kites I've done this a couple of times where I've absentmindedly not been thoughtful about um, where I start the inner or the outer and then it's gone a little bit wrong and it was on a pen drawing and it's really stressful but I pretended it was okay just to you know, make myself happy okay and finally the last quarter doing the ins and the outs so you can see the purpose of these two circles and if yours is a little bit skew with not in all the intersections, but you have two different size circles, you'll get the drawing that you're after. Okay. Now, lastly, we're going to take the tips of the kites and connect them to, let's show you like this. So the tips of the kites connecting to the corners of the square and to the tips of the kites. So every tip of every kite in these uh, corners at the center will connect to the corner of a square. Okay, I'll do this uh, quarter first. And you can see what it'll look like. Okay. And my pen and my ruler and everything's getting smudgy, so wiping it down. I think I might have done that too late, but oh well. I think you can learn a lot from <laughs> not doing what I do exactly, <laughs> being a little bit more careful. Okay. Let's do this corner because the ruler was in position. Okay, so can you see the pattern? It's now complete, ready to transfer to watercolour paper. Brilliant.